In this video I thought we'd talk about old telephones and how easy it is to sort of convert them. Um, this is a 300 series telephone um, I converted um, a few weeks ago. Um, very relatively, I bought it in, in an original sort of condition. It had been at the same address for uh, since it had been installed. Um, the chap was telling me it's a very old house, very, a very large sort of manor house. Uh, it was dated 1945 and it was sort of installed obviously sometime in the 40s, mid 40s. Um, and um, they found it in an old drawer and uh, they sold it to me. And um, I, I, I've been restoring it over the last sort of few weeks. Uh, it had been uh, refurbished at some point. I think they refurbished these in the 60s at some point um, because it had the original sort of rubber. Uh, curly cord for the handset and um, had a um, rubber uh, line cord still. I've replaced it with the um, sort of more appropriate cotton cable, cotton woven cable, uh, handset cord and line cord. Um, the other thing was that I, as I do with most phones that I restore is I always change the carbon granule microphone for one of these electronic types. It's for the benefit of whoever you're talking to. The clarity is so much better when you change them from the carbon to the electronic type of transmitters, uh, microphones. I say it's for the benefit of the person at the other end who you're talking to. Once converted, they sound um, very good. It's got a very clear speaker, uh, a receiver in the um, uh, handset here. Uh, very loud and very clear. This uh, it's got it's got a drawer. I've just put some sort of numbers and things that are important. A little pad at the bottom here to to make notes on. And um, this one hasn't uh, had a blanking plate, but I um, tracked down a drawer to make it more sort of original. So this is pretty much in the, the condition, it, the original condition it would have been when it was issued. I had to lubricate the dial, which now um, is working fine. Uh, it was a bit sluggish before and I always sort of clean and lubricate these dials. Um, it's just because they probably haven't had any uh, cleaning or lubrication since um, it was refurbished sort of in the 60s. So that's the 300 series. I did have to replace the rubber legs on that as well because one of them was, was sort of broken. We're going to be looking at the uh, 476. The next one from the 300 series was basically uh, a 706 which I do have, but I don't have it actually here at the moment. The one we're going to be uh, working on, or I'll show you how to strip down, is the 746. This is the black version of the 746. Um, it's got the modern BT socket on the end. Completely converted it. That was changing the uh, transmitter for a, um, an electronic one. Again, the dial needed to be uh, lubricated to work correctly. It's all working fine. Um, so this is the Mark I version of a uh, 746 because you've got no sort of um, groove for the um, receiver to sit on. I've got a, a Mark II in ivory and as you can see from the two you can see that they are, the one has no groove cut out but this one has a little groove. It was because these could sort of be left, the, the, the handset could be returned without it being fully on hook. Although I've actually never managed to achieve this. Um, there was obviously, they obviously saw a need to, in, to improve it. Whereas this, you can't really drop it down wrong. Whereas this, I suppose you could put sort of a skew or, or leave it off the hook. There we go. That's actually not on the hook now. So um, they, they, they changed it for a slightly better more accurate way of keeping the switch hooks down. Um, so again, dial lubricated. This has had a new line cord with a BT plug on because it had a, it was missed it. The line, the line cord had been completely cut. So I, um, you can buy these on eBay, new line cords, um, which we'll need to uh, refurbish the one I'm going to show you. 
This is a touch tone French phone, which I thought would be worth showing. Um, this has what they call the um, extra earpiece, so you can be talking um, and somebody can be listening on the other end. They call it a mother-in-law listening. And I think on the on the British phones, this is a French phone. On the British phones, this is just called the watch receiver, as it sort of looks a bit like a pocket watch, I suppose. Um, this is a French touch tone. It still rings on bells. It's a uh, tone dialing. You've got the hash and the star key and a recall button. My phone converted this. These are quite nice because they have a um, volume control for the bell. The bell will ring slightly softer or louder depending on what position this one is midway. And my friend who converted this quite cleverly fitted a bell on and off switch so that you can you can actually turn the bell off. There's just a little slider switch there underneath the phone so you can turn off the bell. Well the 746 we're going to be looking at today is uh, this one. I have uh, taken it, taken most of the, uh, taken a few screws and things out of this just to make it a bit quicker for the video. Um, it's got a bell on and off switch, which is uh, unusual to find. You don't see many of these 746 phones with bell on and off switches. You see plenty of them with a recall switch, which was used if you were on a party line or or such like. But um, bell on and off switches are a little bit rarer, mainly because people only had one telephone installed in their home, and if you turned the bell off. The subscriber, the person who is at home with the phone, may forget that they've turned the bell off and of course people would be ringing the phone and there would be no sign of the phone ringing at all. So it was general practice that they, the GPO would never fit a phone, a single phone connected to a single phone line with the, the ability to turn the bell off completely. Um, on the later trim phones you could actually turn the bell ringer down but you couldn't turn it off and this was so that you could um, never forget that you turned the, the bell ringer off. So this one must have been on an extension. The 706 that I have also has a bell on and off button. Uh, again, it has written underneath it an extension. This has the um, dial card, which I obviously won't be able to retain because somebody's put Tipex on it. I do like to keep all the original dial cards on the phone unless I'm connecting them to my own phone line to use, uh, simply because it's just interesting to find little bit of history of where the what area the phone came from. Um, so this one says Cardiff, so it's obviously South Wales, but again the number has been tipexed out and I imagine somewhere there would be perhaps a number for the exchange or somewhere because this would have to be connected with a bell box in the house or possibly a, another phone or this is the extension. Uh, you may have noticed that this actually has a volume control. How this would work is you'd hold, the, hold this up to your ear and with this finger you can turn the little potentiometer up and down to vary the, the volume. There's an amplifier built into here. This is designed for somebody who's hard of hearing so that they can actually amplify the sound um, to their volume that they're happy to um, listen with. They did variations of this handset with flashing lights in the, in the top and things. But this is uh, one that's designed for somebody who... Um, it's a bit hard of hearing. I've um, lubricated the dial already. Um, there's plenty of videos online that show you how to do the lubrication of the dial. But I will strip the dial down um, and show you what to do. First of all, I'll go through the tools I use when I'm working on these uh, telephones. These, these 700 series at least. Always a good idea to have an electronic microphone um, so that you can take out the original carbon microphone and replace it with a modern electronic one. As I said, benefiting the person who you're talking to at the other end. You need a flat blade screwdriver, um, some alcohol, isopropic alcohol to uh, give it a clean. Obviously a cleaning cloth. Um, this uh, steel bar, this, this round sort of steel threaded bar I use what happens is when I end up um, cleaning the cord, once the cord is all clean, you thread this through the length of the cord, and then with a heat gun, you can warm the wire up. Um, quite a, quite a hot temperature. These are quite robust cables. Quite a hot temperature, and what happens is it it, it sort of gains its um, 
it memorizes its uh, curliness and you can get these sometimes these rather sad looking uh, cords looking really quite good again um, the this one for example the one I worked on earlier it, it had a really badly damaged sort of flat cord but with the heating method by wrapping this through and heating it up I managed to get it quite good I'll show you the process of doing that in, in the second part of this video about this telephone you need a bit of sticky tape to remove the centre of the dial, um, some flat nose pliers and some oil. I always tend to put oil in a syringe like this. It's a bit more precise and you can be a bit more accurate of where you place the oil. Put these tools to the side. This little dish here to put the uh, screws and things in. So the first thing to do with these phones is if you get one in condition like this, it needs a thoroughly good clean. Um, if you take off this screw at the back. Now, this is normally retained by a nut. Quite often the nut is missing. So there's a spring here and a nut to stop this from basically coming off the shell. But unfortunately, this, this has got the, the nut and the spring missing. It's not all that critical. Um, it's just nice if it's got the spring. Um, I'll have to look in a little box of parts and see if I've got a spring and a nut I can use. I surely have a spare one somewhere. So in order to get this case off, and you don't have to worry about it with the button because the button is separate from inside, it's actually part of the, the case, the shell, is to sort of place the hand on here and slowly lift up the back and you'll find with a little bit of jiggling about that the case will come off free. Now this whole case now can be submersed in water and cleaned. I think you may, may just be able to make out the, the fading it's a bit darker on this side and a bit lighter on that side where it's obviously sat on a windowsill or it's been exposed to the sun. The same sort of goes for the receiver. It's much darker this way than that way. It's obviously been left on the phone that way instead of being left that way. So that's the, the shell. Um, the next thing is to take off the uh, plastics of the dial so that can be cleaned. So you just cut yourself off a piece of sticky tape and you'll find that the crystal lens comes off with a bit of sticky tape. So that can be cleaned and that can be cleaned. What also you can do is remove this outer dial bezel. If, if you look, there's a locking uh, mechanism inside here, and just by manipulating it in the correct holes, you'll find the slots line up. And then, once you've got them lined up perfectly, you'll find that the bezel will just drop out. And now we can probably see the actual extent of the fading from the, the sunlight. Um, you prob I probably won't be able to get it much... Um, much more like the original colour. Um, I will try polishing it as much as I can to try and get it as a, get it away, but this is actually sort of sun damage. Um, I haven't gone and tried the, um, the retro brighting method. I don't know if that would help or whether it would damage the plastic, I'm not sure. Um, I haven't done any research in that area, but I mean, at the end of the day, these things are getting on. This is from, I think, 1973. Yes, 1973. So, you know, there's a fair age to them now, so we would call this patina or patina nowadays. So that's the uh, shell dealt with. We pop this card out here. I won't, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to retain this because somebody has put Tipex on it and I don't think I'd be able to scrape it out. Um, so I will have to print another one of these out. Um, the best paper I've found for printing those, you can find lots of the, them online, um, images online you can download, and I find this, this sort of memo pad paper is actually almost identical in the colour and the thickness um, is almost the same. So I feed one of these pieces of paper in with the printout and you'll find that it almost identically matches the... Um, and if you've got an old typewriter you can actually type the phone number in. but. Um, we look through the fonts on the computer, you can get something to look quite convincing. So it's just a little tip to use one of those memo pads. 
So in order to disassemble the dial, you remove this centre screw that you find under the dial label. And then you get the, the, the sort of finger dial here. Now this can be completely submerged in water and cleaned. And then you'll find the um, finger, finger dial, finger plate, where the numbers are. And you can just pop this, move this metal bar in to the centre and it'll disengage. It's just a spring clip, basically. And once you remove the clip, you'll find that this pops off. And as you can see, it's absolutely filthy. Again, be completely submerged in warm, soapy water and it'll get it nice and clean. This is the uh, dial. And as I said, there's plenty of um, videos online that show you how to clean and lubricate this. So I've done that already. And all you sort of do is you clean the inside cup of the governor. Again, you'll see online, and with a syringe you can quite accurately apply oil into all the moving parts. Um, I repair clocks as also as a hobby, so it doesn't phase me taking this completely down and stripping it and cleaning it, which is what I've actually done. But um, unless you're familiar with how the, the governor and everything works, it's, it, it should already be adjusted. And if you can get your cloth in um, with a bit of alcohol and and try and clean off as much as you can, you'll make an improvement in, um, in the dial mechanism anyway. Because these things probably haven't been lubricated since um, the sort of perhaps the 80s if they were converted like this one had been to the um, BT sort of plug and socket system. So um, sometimes they haven't been oiled or lubricated since they were new. But um, I've done that now. I, what I will do is I will take the finger stop off here simply because it's rather dirty and I can give that a good clean as well. So that can be submerged in water and cleaned. Now this line cord I've disconnected already. You can see they're just terminals. If you go online and you Google um, GPO 746 conversion You'll have diagrams and all sorts of information you can find out on how to convert the electronics inside. So I will order a new one of these cables and in part two we'll fit the, as well as repairing this um, handset cord, we will upgrade the um, line cord to a brand new one that matches the colour, the ivory colour. And we'll put the whole thing back and we'll do various adjustments in part two, but in this part, part one, We'll just look at how we sort of strip it down to give it a good clean. So this can really be disregarded because the, 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 the clip that retains this in the socket is missing. It's pretty much useless. Um, we can perhaps save the, the, what the, these are what they call the grommets, um, which slotted on the inside so we can perhaps save the grommet. And um, uh, yes, that's the, probably the only thing worth salvaging, so that can be thrown away. I've disconnected the handset um, leads. Um, I'll just tighten these screws up before they come loose. Although this has the amplifier built into it, which is actually built into the bar here, the actual the grip of the receiver, the hand part of the receiver, uh, the wires are identical. Um, as you can see, the the, the 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 standard wires. So I will. There'll, there'll be no need for me to. Um, worry about where they go, there's no extra leads or anything to worry about. Um, if you do happen to have to um, work on one of these or, or take them apart, the best thing you can do is take high quality photographs of where everything's connected um, so that if you um, have to, uh, if you get stuck or you don't know where things have come from, at least you've got a, a good guide to work back to. The other thing I've noticed about this phone is the bells are completely the bell ringing system unit is completely loose. I noticed on the bottom that the screws that keep that in position are, are missing. Um, I, I don't know why somebody would un, unscrew the bell ringing, the bell, the bell ringers in there. I have no idea why they would do that, but I'll need to find some replacement screws in order to remount this. So basically, this 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 part of the phone is sorted. We will, um, I'll, I'll I'll rewire it when I get the. Um, new line cord. Um, 
I think this will need a res the, the resistor, as uh, most of them do. But um, for now, uh, this part of the foam we, we shan't worry any more about. We will um, worry about that a bit later. So the next part we want to strip down is the, um, the receiver. So we can unscrew the two end caps. As you can see, they're pretty dirty, so they can be thoroughly submerged in water and cleaned, as can all the parts on this side. I've uh, removed the two wires that the speaker is connected to, and you'll notice there'll be something different about this one because of the amplifier built in. It's two pink wires going to a bracket which has got the potentiometer on, so um, that can be removed and put to one side, that's fine. The microphone um, I've removed, again it's just two screws and two spade terminals, um, as there are on this end two spade terminals, so there's no need to undo all the screws, all the bolts. So what we'll do is we'll basically dis dis discard this one with the, line, the old line cord and we'll replace it with this modern one which we'll just drop in there as a replacement. So that, that'll mean the quality of our speech going down the line will be much better. Now I could take off the uh, could take out the line cord here and um, unscrew it from all these terminals but um, I don't think I really need to bother to go to the effort of actually completely stripping it down. I think I can pretty much clean this. It's not too bad. It's not the one that's not the worst phone I've seen. It's pretty clean really. I can sort of clean and polish this without having to submerge the receiver. I can just submerge this, this this cord into very hot water and give the cable a good clean. And then we will, um, in part two, I will show you how I uh, wrap it round this, this rod. And with the heat gun, we'll um, heat it up and see if we can get this handset cord looking any better. You can actually buy, again, you can buy brand new handset cords or at least reproduction handset cords. And you don't have to go to the bother of even bothering to clean it. But um, I, I think this is savable. I've done much worse. The one on the previous phone here, this actually came from a printer's. Uh, so it was absolutely covered in paint and all sorts. But this one has actually come, come quite clean. So um, if this one managed it, I'm sure the one on, on the one waiting to be done will polish up nicely, will clean up nicely. So that's it for part one. So in part two, we'll have the pieces all clean and we'll go about converting and um, assembling everything and then we'll make the various adjustments. In the meantime I'll try and find some screws to secure the um, the bell ringing coils and um, I'll see if I can find a, a spring and a nut to go on, on here. I may not have them but say, as I say it's not critical. It's just that the, this screw um, doesn't become detached from the shell. So yes, in part two we'll start to put it back and, and um, we'll see if it actually we can get it to work and how well the, the amplifier, how loud the amplifier works as well, which should be quite interesting.